So I want to do a really quick and short lesson um, for you all tonight, and that is basically on Blender and cylinders. So Blender does a funny thing when it creates a cylinder for you. Let's put one in here. Um, so when you uh, take a look at the vertices structure of a cylinder, one of the things that you'll notice about the cylinders in Blender is that this top face is basically just one face with you know, 30 some odd vertices on it. And um, while that works, you know, for Blender and, and especially for like procedural uh, textures, uh, that sort of thing, it's not always great for UV unwrapping and really not all, always, it, not that good for uh, putting into a game engine like Unity or, or, or something along those lines. So let's just, uh, let's kind of illustrate this. So what's cool is, the new versions you have some nice um you have nice uv mapping already put into blender for you for their basic stuff so their basic shapes are already uv unwrapped and so it's not that bad um and if i find myself a uh a, a texture let's do we'll, we'll find one let me pause this we'll, i'll find one really quickly and let's put this on here and it will work just fine so i found myself a texture so I should be able to uh, go here. Let's give this a new texture. And, um, and I should be able to go here and open said texture. It's gonna come in there. It's going to rendered mode. It's not rendering. Probably because I need to use my nodes There we go. So now I've got this, I've added my, my image node and everything like that. Let's take a look at, so there, there we go and go there. And uh, let's just move it over to the side here. So let's add another one, exactly the same. And now let's, we're going to take a, a little bit of a different approach to it here. So I'm going to go into uh, edit mode, and I'm going to grab the top of the face. I'm going to delete only the face of the top and of the bottom. And then I'm going to go to uh, the entire cross section here. Whoops, nope, not that. There we go. I'm going to hit E to extrude and S to scale. Grab that, and I'll do it one more time. And then I'll hit, um, go to Versi, hit M, and we're going to merge those in the center. And we'll do exactly the same here. E, S, E, S, M at center. So now, essentially, I have, um, you know, almost the exact same object. If I then go to my UV editing, uh, you'll see it's not really prepped in any way, shape, or form. So what I'm going to do here is I'll just highlight that. Highlight that. Oh, nope, doesn't I just do that. Control E, mark my seam. Control E, mark my seam. And then take one of these and mark a seam. Now, I would probably want the backside, and it doesn't really matter. So now, select all, U, unwrap. And you can kind of see very similar uh, things. So let's just, and I mean, it basically is identical. And let's just take a look at the texture and see if there's any difference because it doesn't look like there's going to be any difference but then what we're going to do is we're going to fire up a game and let's take a look and see if the um see if the uh objects have any difference in the actual game itself so let me just um i'm just going to grab the same um let's go back to my layout here So I'm going to grab the exact same texture on this. So I'm just going to go to the drop down here and it should be material one. And you can kind of see there's some different, um, 
some different like order like to the rotation of the object but essentially they look identical now let's do one other thing here to modifier and I'm going to do a subdivision surface modifier to each And this is where you really see the, the big difference. <clears throat> Notice these ridges along here that are happening with the subdivision surface, whereas here you don't have that. The reason why you don't have that is precisely because of the, 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 this extra set of vertices that I have here. We're going to do one. Let's do one more. So I'm going to um, let's duplicate this and do a third here. Get into edit mode. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out this, delete that vertice, and then take these and merge them in the center again. And you can see that now you're having the same issue. Oops. But it's still a little bit better because of the fact that I've got multiple vertices all basically going into a single vertice. I can also kind of control this a little bit by doing a loop cut and kind of adding that extra cross section there. That really helps change what I'm doing. But let's just say I don't want to do that. Let's just use the edge crease and see what we can achieve with edge crease. So if I hit Shift E and I do an edge crease and I want it to be a little bit less, let's see that's 0.4 or so, there we go, boom and about 0.4 on this one too. There we go. And then that looks pretty good, but you can really see how the texture is really kind of tortured in here. Let's, uh, I think we need to re-unwrap it. So um, select all and um, yeah, you can see what happened here. So let's re-unwrap it. And now you can see it essentially looks almost identical to the other one. So let's go in here. Whoops, there we go, wrong button. And we're gonna crease that to about 0 0.4, 0 0.48 or so, this is what it was before. There we go. And now let's go and do this one. So then again, crease point four five, and then again here at point four five. Now I'm not even sure we need to end up going into uh, the gaming engine to kind of see or understand exactly how this is, is gonna look different, you can see that difference right away. So if you use the Blender um, you know, default cylinder exactly the way it is, and then you wanna add a subdivision surface modifier to it, this is what you end up with. You end up with these kind of like uh, ridges. Um, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that this face up here is just one big large face with lots of vertices and it allows it to do that. I wonder, just out of curiosity, and I don't honestly know what this is going to do, if I hit Control R and I kind of add another loop cut, you can see that actually does help a decent amount, but the problem with that is I can't get as nice of a beveled edge as I might get here. Um, I can also probably change the beveling of this if I scale it down. Well, see, it's going to stretch it, but essentially it did give it a little bit more roundness along the top. So the distance that you do your loop cuts from, that's going to change how round that looks essentially in, um, in, your, uh, in your UV unwraps. But again, I have to unwrap it again now that I moved those so that it does the, uh, the scaling properly. I tell you, Blender 2.9 is so much easier to do UV unwrapping in than, um, than 279. Things like the scaling and, and, and some of these little changes that you make are just so easy just re-unwrap and then it's done. Um, it's so much easier than, uh, than the original uh, 2.7 and before Blender versions. Uh, I, I have to say I'm really impressed. So I just put these, 
this object with these three cylinders in unity and you can see it looks exactly like it does in blender there's no big surprises here it's exactly like what i was saying um where that middle cylinder definitely seems to to work the best um which has the the two extrusions uh of the caps there and uh but this one which is their default with the cap that has all the different um all the different vertices that looks awful so that's basically it if you're using a cylinder and you uh, are straight from blender and you use their prefabricated cylinder and you want to put it in there and you want to have a subdivision surface modifier on there then you're going to have to delete those caps that they have delete the faces and then extrude and scale your own new basically cross sections uh to make yourself a much better cylinder than uh than what the blender prefabricated one is going to make so yeah that's that's there you go we've got an uh a three different cylinders three different methods of capping them basically on the end and you can see that you've got really three very different results um and uh i just want to go back and kind of put this back to where it was get rid of that um get rid of that loop cut uh and you can see that obviously this one is not so good so my recommendation is whenever you're using the blender prefab well, it's not really prefab, is it? I guess that's a game design or a Unity term. But whenever you're using this prefabricated, um, pre-made cylinders, uh, my recommendation is always to create, to empty the faces on the top and the bottom and uh, extrude and scale out a new set of vertices and then do it one more time to create and, and merge them in a center to create all the vertices going to one center point. And that will help you out a lot. And then if you need to create more, you know, you can do that. So I could sit here and go like this. I could stretch that. Then I can add another loop cut. And I could just continue adding more. And then all I've got to do is re-unwrap. And you see how the scale automatic or the texture automatically scales right back to the way it should have been. And now I've got even more control over what's going on here with this. I can even push it you know, up to see if I can keep from crashing my computer. That looks pretty darn good. Um, that's a really, really nice and, and uh, smooth, smooth texture, which is really good. The other key to this is if we go back to UV editing, one of the keys to this here is also a seamless texture. Make sure you're getting a seamless texture because you can see the seam right here, right, where I cut that down the middle. Um, and if I, you know, take a look at it without the line, you can't see that seam. That's not anything I did that was special. Uh, other than what I, what I did do was I got a good texture, a uh, seamless texture, uh, from the internet that allowed that seam when it matches here to work. Now, if I, for instance, went and grabbed this, I don't know why I would want to do this, but let's just do that and bring it away a little bit. It's gonna really mess with some things here. <laughs> okay, um, you can see if we zoom in, you can see the seam right there. You see the seam right there? So it's really important that when you do your UV unwraps that your UV unwraps are, are um, kind of straight. So we'll undo that, put them right back. And now when I go back here, you, you literally can't see that seam anymore. You can't see it at all. So that's actually a really important, you know, part of this too, is get the right texture. If you don't get the right texture, then your UV unwrapping will, will make things a mess. But that's really not what I was talking about. I really wanted to just do a short and sweet little video comparing the pre-made cylinder object with its kind of pre-built end caps. Uh, to what I would do if I were making a cylinder and why that becomes an issue. And it really is only if you do a subdivision surface modifier. Uh, but if you do the subdivision surface modifier often, which I know a lot of Blender folks do, then guess what? This is why you don't want to have those end caps be the way that they are. So anyway, yeah, that's basically it. Um, nice and simple. Change your end caps. Uh, and have a good night.